Our lab is working mostly on mechanisms of antimalarial drug resistance. So I've been in the malaria community for I think 26 years uh, before my PhD and then I realized in the late 90s that there was a lot of attention being played to being focused on anti-malarial drug resistance but very few people were actually tackling the molecular basis of it. So there was sort of a niche there that I realized sort of needed to be explored and I'm a molecular geneticist by training. So we started that in the late 90s. Um, basically developing genetic techniques to manipulate parasites in vitro and then study the phenotypic consequence. And because I have a quantitative background, sort of drug resistance is a good quantitative sort of measure that you can apply to these studies. Chloroquine was sort of found by serendipity essentially. It came out of the synthetic dye industry and it was found to be anti-malarial. Um, artemisinin again was a natural product which they you know, were able to develop into something that was, could be administered through these derivatives. And then after that, there was this process of, of rational drug design where they said, well, what's good in, you know, let's look for a drug target that works against bacteria or fungi, and let's find the orthologue of that molecule in plasmodium and see if that's a good drug target. And one of the classic examples was this, the target of triclosan, which is this um, antibiotic that's in many household products, shampoo, soap, impregnated plastic wear. And that's a very effective topical microbicide and uh, there was an intense effort to see if that would work in plasmodium because the target was there and there were crystal structures and it bound to the crystal structure. But actually we showed, and we were part of that discovery effort, but then we found that that molecule actually is not as central for plasmodium. You can delete it and triclosan has a different activity. So it's effective to a degree, but it's not through the mechanism that had been elucidated in other systems because plasmodium evolutionary is so distinct from other organisms that that translatability was lost, essentially lost in translation. So after this sort of fairly non-fruitful effort to identify drug targets based on knowing which targets were effective in other organisms, there was a switch towards asking, well, what's effective against cells in high throughput screens against cultured cells? So let's just screen millions of compounds and find any compounds that can efficiently inhibit the proliferation of parasites in vitro. And of those, are any effective in a mouse? And that's sort of the, one of the bottlenecks. So if they have bioavailability and they can cure a mouse infection, which obviously you can scale up the number of compounds you can test, then we'll start to look more deeply and so there's been a lot of effort to translate these high throughput screens into medicines and that's been very productive and Novartis has really been a leading company in that endeavor. The, what's proving to be difficult with some of these screens is that they've focused on specific inhibitors that are highly potent but of course that means that because they have a singular target that target can mutate and we're finding the mutation is coming up quite easily. So uh, to overcome that, obviously people are still are looking for partners that either can neutralize each other because they antagonize each other, or they, they keep coming back to partner drugs that you know, are involved in heme metabolism or heme degradation, heme um, toxicity. So to overcome resistance is to, so to prevent antimalarial resistance, uh, it, it's, it's, it's not easy, I have to say. Um, so again, I think understanding the molecular biology and figuring out how to sort of neutralize the acquisition of multidrug resistances is, is effective.